Hello, welcome to this edition of Those Who Served on TV and Fordo.com. Today we are featuring World War II veteran, Mr. Otis Hickman. Mr. Hickman has lived in this area since 1941 when his eldest brother was inducted, he was drafted into the service and went through the service center here in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Mr. Hickman, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. So excited to talk to you and learning about your accomplished military career as well as your career outside the military mm -hmm. since, since you uh, retired. You wanted to go into the service. Yes, I did. You were gainfully employed in Rossville, Georgia working at Ryan's Pharmacy, Ryan's is that Pharmacy. correct? Ryan's Pharmacy, which is no longer there, but uh, you were accomplished there. You started out and you were making how much per week? <laughs> I'm ashamed to tell you, but uh, I was making tops, I guess. I made $9 a week. $9 a $9 week? $9 a week when I worked there. And then, when I went across the street, I got a raise to 12. Went across the street, you went to work at Roy's Grill, and everyone knows Roy's Grill. Been there since 1932. And uh, you were there as a cook, and you started learning a lot there with food services, correct? That is correct. Uh, at 16 years old, they, uh, the manager, Jim Lewis, the owner's brother, he had, uh, he had to have uh, cataract surgery. So he go, they take him to Chattanooga to the eye center and they remove these cataracts. So that left me there in charge of the whole shebang, no checks, no nothing. So I go ask him, I say, well, what am I going to do about all these bills? How are we going to pay them? So forth and so on. Well, just sign Norway's name to it. <laughs> I said, I can't do that. He said, oh, yeah, you can. I said, I'm, I'll authorize it for you go down to the Hamilton National Bank and uh, tell Mr. Garner who you are and tell him that you're going to be uh, taking care of all the payouts and all that and another over there. And I have authorized you to sign Roy's signature. So I had to learn how to do Roy's signature to the best I could, you know. And I learned how to do his signature and all these things. And I went down there and I talked to uh, Mr. Garner. And, well, you're too young for this kind of business. I said, well, yeah, I know I'm young, but I can handle it. You know, I was, I guess I was a little overconfident, but I don't, I look at it now, I wasn't too overconfident because I knew I could do it, you know. And so I, I took the responsibility of, of running the place while he was in the hospital and all that stuff wow. during that period of time. Trial by fire. You jumped in, you took over, it, and you proved yourself. Mm -hmm. You had begun working at Ryan's Pharmacy when you were 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Then at 16, you're running Roy's Grill. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you got a raise uh, from Roy's Grill. You were making $18 per week. Mm -hmm. Now, you weren't in school, though. There were 10 children in your family, and you were helping to support the family. Mm -hmm. Your two older brothers by that time had been drafted. They were in the end service. Mm -hmm. And even though it was going to be a cut and pay from $18 a week to $50 a month, mm -hmm. you wanted to serve. I sure did. 
wanted to serve. I so sure did. finally, finally, in 1945, you were drafted. August the 8th. August the 8th, 1945. Just before your 18th birthday, is that correct? Yeah. I wasn't, no, just after. Just after. My birthday's in June, and I was drafted in August. Turned 18. Yeah. Yeah, I went down, I stayed in Fort McPherson in the, in the mess. I stayed there during the separation period of the European heroes, you know, the veterans from the European campaign. And then uh, when when we got all of the, the most of those separated, then I left there and I went, I was shipped to Fort McClellan, Alabama to uh, basic infantry training. And I took my basic infantry training at Fort McClellan. I took, uh, Oh, 16 weeks, I believe it was a training there. And then after, as soon as that was over, I went overseas. I went to uh, Japan, and I went into the occupation forces, and I spent the rest of that year, which was 46, and until February, or January or February of 47. And then I come back and they released me from active duty on February the 9th of uh, 40, 47. 47. And you had gone to Fort Benning for Food Service Center training as well. Yeah, that was later. That was in 55. 55. So the military capitalized on your success in food services. Well, Roy's Grill sort of prepared you, and then you took your abilities, your ability to run a restaurant at the age of 16, Yeah. your ability to order, to schedule. You learned so much and then you took it and you gave back to the military from your success and with your training. So World War II ends, and in 1948, you go into the Army Reserves mm -hmm. thinking, it's good. What happened in 1950? September 1950. Yes, sir. The Korean, the Korean War started in June, and On the 25th day of June, they invaded, and I lost my brother uh, in the August, I believe it was, August uh, 51. I believe I'm telling you right on that. I'm not. I don't remember that date exactly, but it was in August. So that just put more uh, encouragement behind me, you know, more pushing behind me to serve to try to make up for what they had done to our family, you know, and all this, that, and another. And, and I told my dad, when, they, when I got orders to report for active duty in September of that year, I told my dad, I said, uh, I said, don't worry about me. I said, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm uh, 
inclined to serve. You know, I think that's my goal is to serve in the military and all this. And I'll take care of myself. You, you did. Know. In fact, you were one of the few. After Fort Hood, Texas, you find yourself in Korea. In fact, you found yourself in the Battle of the Chosun Reserve. Chosun Reservoir. Oh, Reservoir, thank you, sir. 300,000 Chinese and North Koreans surrounded you. It was the coldest winter in history, 40 below zero. Mm -hmm. Military were suffering, ill-equipped as far as having sleeping, the weapons were freezing. Tell us, tell us about that. Well, I really can't uh, tell you how we made it as well as we did, but it was, uh, all I can tell you, it was the Lord's will that we, that we uh, survived and we took over the targets that we're supposed to take and we uh, uh, annihilated the enemy forces there that had the Marines cut off and we opened up the evacuation route for the Marines to come out of this reservoir. We opened up that route so they could come on back to south. And when they, when we got them out of there, they were, they were bringing what few that were left of them, they had them uh, tied on their artillery pieces. They had them just tied across them. And they had them hanging on the sides of their ragged vehicles and just wherever. And the ones that were still movable, they were dragging out of there and with their weapons as uh, walking sticks, this, that, and another, you know, and they, it was awful, just to be honest with you, it was terrible. I'm sure, sir. And I don't know how we done it, but we done it, you know. You survived that conflict. Mm hmm And then I had to come, all these other conflicts to fight out here in this world and they were just about as bad as the military. <laughs> well, I, I hope out there, that. out here in the hallway, right there in the corner, there's a picture out there of uh, the Chosen Few monument. And with all, I, I had that picture made and I presented it to the Post. And it's a, it's a breakdown of how many uh, Congressional Medal of Honors that were given at that for that battle, how many Silver Stars, Bronze Stars, how many men, and everything else. It's right there in that. If you take a second, you know just and read that and you see what, a, and you get a whole lot more than I can tell you, you know. A lot of this stuff, you know, that's been a long time ago. And a lot of this stuff, uh, I've tried to rule it out, but it comes back, you know, just every once in a while. Thank you for sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. There are three members of the Chosen Few here at the FW Post. Yourself, 
-hmm. Lindy McNabb mm -hmm. and James McNabb. Yes. Three. And, well, there'll, there'll be a total of four. I forgot about the guy in Lafayette. His name is Raymond Rayleigh. And he was in the artil 39th Artillery in support of us, you know, there to choose on. We are very, very fortunate to have gentlemen like you yeah. here in jo North Georgia. Well, it's very fortunate. I'm a very fortunate person to be here. City of Chirwan. Hmm? There was another battle, the city of Chirwan. Chirwan. That was in uh, that was in the spring of fifty one. Spring of fifty one. Yeah, that's the the one eight seven airborne made a a jump there just in front of us, and uh, as we were going to Chirwan to uh, either take it or whatever, you know, we had to take it to open it, to open up the passageway to North Korea across the 38th parallel. And we had to have that city at the Chirwan. It was a railhead for the North, uh, all of their supplies, headquarters and all that. And so it was an essential it, route it that you had to. That we had to take that. And our, our unit took that one. You took a lot, the retaking of Seoul, Port Chop Hill, Papa Sun, and uh, mm -hmm. when I was curious, Jane Russell Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, they were, they, were, they were named, that was the GI name for the places. But they were numbered by such numbers and location and all that on the maps, you know. But, that was our way of knowing where we were and where we were going and our language, you know. Something worth fighting for, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> yeah. You told me Betty Grable adorned airplanes and posters. Yeah. And mm -hmm. some of those yeah. people I enjoy watching. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn. She'd come over there one time when when I was over there. So you got to see Marilyn. Just about that a distance. I wasn't close enough to really get to see her. But I knew that it was her, the images, you know, I could, I could see it well enough. Well enough. Inspiration. Mm -hmm. You come back home July 1951, mm -hmm. and you work for Roy's Grill again. Not re after doing all the wonderful things that you did, all the battles, all the adrenaline, all the accomplishments, being at home at Roy's Grill just wasn't what you wanted. No. 1954. I, I wasn't satisfied. So in 1954, you go back into the Army full time. You have survived World War One, two, World War Two. You have survived Korea. Not enough. You go back full time Army. And where do you find yourself in 1968? Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam. In between two tours in Korea, two, two tours in Germany. We go to Kuchi, Vietnam, with the 555 Engineer. Five. Five five four. Five five four engineer battalion. Mm -hmm. D company. D company, and you're there sixty eight and sixty nine. Mm -hmm. Three wars. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, they blew up my mess hall. One time it was blown to bits. Killed two of my cooks, wounded about 14 in the chow line at noontime. Some, some one of the employees uh, planted a time bomb in the tray rack 
in the mist tray rack and set it for noontime. You know, set it for noontime, and it blew it up. They blew it, it blew up at noontime. You know, well, when we was feeding lunch. That's that just that's just one. You know, there's all kinds of things happen. You were the director by that time. Yeah, that was my job. You ran the food services for that, the military. For that court, yeah, for that company. Sergeant First Class E7. Mm hmm. Climb the ranks. But you began working when you were 13. What? You, you had never graduated from high school? No. In fact, fifth grade? Fifth grade. I, uh, well, I took my GED in 63. In 63. I took my GED and I passed it, and then I guess 2002, in 2002 I guess it was, uh, the state of Georgia come out with a program that all World War II veterans to begin with, all World War II veterans that didn't have a high school that was called to serve and didn't get to finish high school, that they would grant the, them a high school diploma. Well, I went to work on that just like that, you know. So I got, I got, a, I got it together here for the post, and I got 13 of the members here at the post, I got 13 of them, and we uh, went to Ridgeland High School and uh, got our application in, you know, to Ridgeland High School and all this. And I got 13 of them, uh, including myself, uh, high school diploma, you know. And all this time while you were in the military, you continued your education. Yes, I did. I went to school in the military. In school. I went to, yeah, I went to, every chance I got to go to school, I went, you know, like to food service school, weapons training, whatever kind of class come open that I could participate in, I went, if I could. You know the value of education. Mm -hmm. 69, finally. Finally. You're home. 71. 71. That's the year I retired. Retired from the military. Most people retired from the military three major wars would say, hey, I have served, I've done my time, but not you. Mm -hmm. No. You, um, took advantage of the GI Bill, mm -hmm. on the job training, state of Georgia. You go to work at the Walker Correctional Institute in their food service. Mm -hmm. And you are there until 1988. Mm -hmm. 15 years of it. 15 years. And then you say, okay, now I'm done working full time, but I'm not done. Mm -hmm. You continue serving for veterans. Mm -hmm. Serving here four years as the commander at the VFW. And the guys talk about the wonderful food. You were in charge of the kitchen here. Yeah. What's your favorite dish to prepare? I oh, guess roast beef. Roast beef. I guess that's my favorite. But I, I enjoy doing all those different menus of the military. See, they had a master uh, menu in the military that all units were supposed to follow, you know. 
And I guess that was my favorite one. Favorite one, roast beef. Yeah. Definitely a I could do, But I could do any of them. I don't doubt that. After we're off air, you can give me some cooking hints because uh, Lord knows I need it. Okay. Definitely. Okay. High school students today, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I don't know what is there. What, what would you tell these high school kids who are about to go out, about to graduate, mm -hmm. about to enter the world? What I would tell them? is finish their high school first and then choose the field you want to go to and when you choose that field, stick with it. Stick with it. And you'll accomplish whatever you want to. Because you certainly, you have stuck with it and have been extremely successful mm -hmm. serving throughout the world. Mm -hmm. What would you tell other members of the military service? What would I tell them? Yes, sir. Well, I just tell them I appreciate their service. I appreciate their service to our country and to continue on. Continue on serving mm -hmm. in whatever avenue. Whatever it is. Continue serving with a servant's heart. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hickman, thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us today and sharing your wisdom, your experience with our viewers. You're welcome. This concludes Those Who Serve World War II episode with Mr. Otis Hickman, retired Sergeant First Class B7. Otis and I both want to take the opportunity to encourage everyone to serve. Everyone has something to give. Make sure you give your with servant's heart, encouraging others daily. I'm Council Lady Paula Stewart, thanking you for your service and encouraging you to get out, volunteer, and serve in the community. It's always a beautiful day in Port Overthorpe. Thank you for serving. <laughs>